And she ignored me for about like a couple months. And then I text her back again. <laughs> and like, hey, you get my message? And uh, she jumped, she told me to jump in a car and then boom. We're just gonna play, right? We're just gonna play. How, how was your weekend, Josh? How was MIA, man? You you do anything fun? Uh, so I'm still here until tomorrow. Tomorrow tomorrow's when my flight is. But um, yeah, it's been it's been pretty good, bro. Just uh, you know, been getting getting away, just being more present. Um, uh, actually met her side of the family and everything uh, yesterday. Had like a little Christmas party, so that was that was really cool. Um, you know, got to speak a little bit of Spanish. You know, got to dance a little bit. Maringue, bachata, and all that, but um, yeah, it's been fun. Um, Miami is, it's like San Diego, it's just like not, it's just flatter, but it's just, it's just humid, you know, but besides that, everything else is it's pretty, I'm, I'm, and instead of seeing, you know, a lot of Hispanics and, and, you know, Asians and different cultures like that, you see a lot of like Cubans, Colombians, you know, so it's, it's a different type of melting pot, but it's, I mean, it's all the same at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's been cool just, you know, resting for the most part and finding time to unwind before I get back to San Diego and really get back on it. So it's been, it's been rewarding for sure. Hell yeah, just man. My, my computer has been acting up this whole time, man. I don't know what I did to this thing, but it might be time to... Um, Upgrade. Finally, yeah, <laughs> finally put her to rest, bro. She's been battle tested for years now, so... What kind of computer is it and how old is it? Uh, to, uh 2015 macbook pro it's like the the spec'd out one the last one that they have with like the intel processor and all that um and it's yeah she she's she's coughing right now let's say that <laughs> i bet you i can fix it say it again i bet you i can fix it i don't I have the same one i don't <laughs> doubt it like that that's honestly the reason why i haven't upgraded all this time and, and especially doing like um doing production stuff over the, you know, especially post-production where it's like heavy graphics and all that. Um, it's because this, this computer really, especially with the, the graphics and all that stuff, it's, it's really helped out, um, or the GPU and the, you know, process and all that's really helped mm-hmm. out in the long run, uh, more than just, you know, the newer generations for the most part, except for the, the M1, but man, it's, <sighs> fingers crossed right now. Honey, I'm, I'm crossed. running a 20, 20- 15 i also am still running one of the 2012 wow mm-hmm. and everything still flows flows perfectly um my 2012 uh, this uh big sur was the first operating system i can't upgrade to it it's at Ooh. that point gotcha. and i actually gotcha. hit the it, i hit that phasing point where they they will not upgrade it i'm like okay oh wow but that one has like a four terabyte memory and mm. it has every, I mean, it has every college project I ever did. It has everything on wow. it. Wow. Yeah. It has everything Shit. from all the way back through high school. It's got all my data on it and it still runs just fine. If it's wow. spitting and sputtering though, um, shoot me a text after the podcast and I will send you a link to an app that you can buy for like seven bucks. That will solve all of your problems. Oh wow! Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> yep. Scoop, scoop. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get your info from Des afterwards. Perfect. I'll just get a group chat going. I think I, I keep forgetting to do that. It'll make my life so much easier. Um, yeah, I'll do that actually. Like right now while we're on the podcast. Um, yo, yo. So Josh, man. Um, so me and Heather were just chatting, you know, before the call, just about other mm-hmm. stuff in general. And I was talking to her about like, um, I was like, man, I got this one dream client. Like I freaking love working with her. It's like, it's like a perfect, it's like a perfect marriage. Like, you know what I mean? Like she has a very specific problems that I'm very good at solving. And it's like immediate results, right? Like for instance, going from charging someone 3k to 40k. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, she, uh, you know, she gave me some, some interesting game on like, so I was like, man, I just need like 10, you know, I'd be happy with just 10 of these, right? Like I don't need a hundred. I just need like 10 dream clients. And then she kind of, you know, shifted my paradigm a bit. So um, 
I want to just kind of open up about that because I think that's that's a you know kind of a good place to start. Um, so Heather, why can't like you know what's your thoughts on this whole dream dream customer situation, right? Like why can I not have ten dream clients? Are you waiting for me? Better not be waiting for me, you guys. No. So we we had this conversation earlier about like dream clients and. And unicorns and and perfect situations. Mm. And I definitely want to unpack that a, a little bit more, like because I just you know like I just want to work with like a very particular specific client with a very particular problem. Don't get me wrong, like I can solve it, but like I think the match energetically, like you know, I just want I want to get I want to be fired up for every person I work with. You know what I mean? So. Um, and then you, you, you know, you kind of shifted my paradigm a little bit. So I'm, I'm pretty curious for you to kind of unpack that on the pod. So I thought it was, I thought it was pretty, I thought it was pretty rele- relevant for today's uh, conversation. So, um, here's, here's the first and foremost, like if you really want to unpack this and you want, you want to dive into this being like the thing first and foremost, um, you get to tell a story and it's, where did you find your unicorn? Who is your unicorn and what makes her a unicorn? And you do it in less than five minutes. (laughs) I'm going to do it less than 60 seconds. So. No, but uh, I I want you to actually unpack it though. Like this isn't a race. I said less than five minutes because I said. But unpack who she is because you did that for me. Okay. So this is a woman who's like super, super like niched of a subject matter expert been doing what she's been doing for almost two decades now, um, really well known in solving a particular problem that has direct uh, impact on performance in the workplace, performance, like how people feel. And then uh, and then to the bottom line, right, in terms of opportunity costs, like she has a direct impact in bottom lines and how people feel and how when they go home, right? And um, super powerful woman, super like worth every single dollar. Her clients love her. She has a very like high repeat rate. So people come back time and time and again for additional services, additional stuff. And I met her actually while I was traveling my first trip to Hawaii when I was there for about two months at a wedding. And we just met on the dance floor. You know, she has a husband. I was with my girl, you know, but we just like, just kind of like struck up a conversation and Really, you know, she was just talking to me about, you know, her situation and I was just asking questions and I just, you know, was just pouring free game, like not attached to like, you know, securing the bag because at the moment I'm, you know, in the middle of a lot of, a lot of different transitions with with a current book of business. And we kind of ended this 30 minute conversation on the dance floor on like, Hey, like I might need to hire you. And I was like, cool, let's, let's book a call. Right. Um, And talk about, I might be interested as well. She's a super powerful woman. And so we jump on a call. We, I create, I'm a big fan of performance contracts. So we created a performance contract where it's retainer plus performance for hitting certain milestones, right? So I'll pretty much, I get paid retainer. And then once we hit milestone one, I'll get X amount, milestone two, and I get X amount. So we're in, we're both incentivized to get results, right? Which is the best, best kind of contracts. And um, we were going through our process within the first month, you know, we go through this thing I call the, the doubles game. You know, if you want to know the doubles game, book a call. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but essentially what we did was we immediately doubled her revenue with a quick, a quick hack, like immediately. Right. Cause we're trying to get to the goal. And so I gave her, gave her this, gave her this playbook and she ended up getting 90% of the people to agree on like dramatically changing the price. And, um, um, and then, um, pretty recently, she came to me with a new proposal from someone who wanted to do who she did business with like years ago, who grew like 10 X the size of their corporation. And she was charging like to me peanuts, like, you know, a couple grand for the last time. And she was asking me how much she should charge. And we were kind of unpacking like, well, how much is the company making? How many people is it? What do you want the result? Like, what do you want the relationship to look like? And we essentially like settled on, you know, mid, uh, you know, uh, you know, $40,000, $50,000, $40,000, $50,000, right? One of those two numbers, depending on like the, the length of the contract. And, um, you know, I was talking to Heather and I was like, man, like, wow, she just have to go from like three grand to 40 grand charging, right? Off rip. She's dubbed, like she's, you know, skyrocketing revenue. She's really, you know, really well known in her space. 
And um, it was almost this perfect recipe of like, I'm really good at helping people offer sales strategy and things like that. And, and that's exactly the, the, the gap that she needed to fill. And I was like, man, I really want more clients like this who are struggling with like this very particular problem who are exact same kind of area in life and area in business. And if I can like, you know, times that by 10, I mean, like life will be good. Life will be easy. Life will be, life will be awesome. And so that's kind of a little bit of a, um, you know, backstory of the situation. The fun part about this, Josh, I would actually really love to get your take on this because I, Josh, how long have you been in business now? Uh, one year so far. Okay. So, okay. So in 17 years of being in business for myself in one aspect or another, not the same company by any means, but in 17 years, I have come across all in all four unicorn clients. And I've covered a handful of industries, like a pretty solid handful, but a, like, I mean, I, I did kind of like have a come to Jesus around the idea that like Desmond's chasing a pipe dream, but not, not necessarily to like pop his bubble, but more to show people like show him and show anybody like those unicorn clients. Those are, they're the inspiration pushers. They are the people that like feed the beast, but they're not the people that pay the bills. So I'd love to hear if you have a unicorn, if you've come across the unicorn as of yet, tell us about your unicorn. If you haven't, what would be your unicorn? And do you think you can find more than one of them like successively in on repeat, like Desmond's really wanting to? Oh man. Um, so far in my journey, I it's crazy too, because I'm seeing this from a different perspective, but I feel like it's, this, it's the same revelation and the same outcome for me as well, um, where I haven't actually connected with my dream client yet. I um, had many, a couple of different things of seeing myself as like, you know, working with different clients. Like, oh, you know, I'd love to work with people that are just like them that are on fire and blah, blah, blah. And then ultimately just realizing like, uh, there's too much there's too much push pull factor. There's too much of, you know, controlling that happens within that and micromanaging that, you know, kind of takes the, the creativity away from the process. And it makes it more about something that, you know, you have to hold on to as long as you possibly can. And you don't allow it to actually flourish into what it, it needs to grow into. Um, so if I say for myself, to answer your question, one, um, who is my like unicorn uh, type of client? I would say it's more of, So the passion project I have in the long run coming from like, in it's, it's really giving back to athletes. That's why I almost, I had to calm myself down the other day when you were, um, you know, talking about, you know, working with athletes and what you've noticed about, you know, that process, because that's mm -hmm. entirely 100% what it is. And my thing is I want to, my unicorn will be working with athletes that understand and are ready to uh, focus on their branding and their marketing efforts and being able to maximize their platforms um, or their social media platforms, their offline platform, um, you know, for the a greater good that not only just within what they can provide for the community, but how they can also enrich themselves, how they can, how they can cultivate the talent, the passion, the gifts that they were given and the skills. I'm sorry, turn that gifting into a skill set. Um, um, outside of, you know, or off the field or, you know, outside of the, the sports realm, um, but they can comp it can complement the sports realm pretty well. That way they have a smoother transition beyond just uh, their sport, which is what we've always known our identity to be. That way you're actually growing and you're allowing other people to grow with you in your journey. And it's bigger than just being a sport, which then you can also leverage when it comes to the negotiation table, when it comes to, uh, you know, being able to do a contract extension or, you know, this, this uh, uh, brand collaboration or, or, you know, acquisition of sorts. Um, so just being able to empower them in a bigger way to realize that their platform is, is a really powerful thing. And they can, I'm sorry, say that again? No, keep going. Oh, um, so they can um, uh, see how powerful their platform their platform is. That way, overall, they know how to, um, you know, be able to use that as a way to enrich the world. And like I said, starting with themselves. 
Um, that's, you know, I know that's more of like a five to, you know, 10, 15 year vision. Um, the more immediate, as far as the unicorn, I would say would have to be uh, service-based businesses slash e-commerce brands or, or entrepreneurs, or I should say just businesses in general that get it when it comes to marketing and realizing that video uh, production, video marketing is really the wave of the future of being able to create multiple assets for them that are going to be able to help them do less, but gain more over time. Um, and being able to leverage that in many different ways that actually makes the creative process more and more fun because it makes it all about them and what lights them up, what, you know, made them start their business or what, like you said, aha moments, you know, came along the journey that they can then enrich the people that they're really, uh, their customer base with, um, that allows them to, um, really scale up in a, in a much bigger way. So I'd say right now, that would be the unicorn that I'm mainly going after. Do I believe that I can work with multiple? 100%. Do I believe that I have found multiple to work with right now? No. Um, I think, was there one more question that you asked? No, keep going. Um, yeah, my, my, I would love to work with them. And I think that that's where I've gotten myself stubborn in many ways uh, from, uh, in essence, not maybe the ego in me wanting to have it my way all the time. Right. And like you said, like one thing that I've heard from a, uh, like a mentor up in, in the creative, the cre it was a multi-million dollar creative agency up in uh, Beverly Hills. Um, the one thing that he says Which all one? the time is, uh, his, uh, his name is Chris Doe. Uh, he runs the future. Okay. Um, I'm, one, I know him. So, oh, man, that's awesome. One of the, th one of the things that he talks about is how, um, as a entrepreneur, as a creative, you have to get to the point where you embrace the suck, meaning the stuff that is going to pay the bills that you might not be totally inspired by, but you embrace the suck that then allows you to have somewhat of a buffer as you're working on those passion projects or whether it's spec work, whether it's, you know, maybe, um, a smaller price, you know, project that way over time, you're cultivating that skill set and that craft and you're mastering your craft, which allows you to then you know, um, acquire the bigger uh, productions or the bigger projects that you want to take on long term. But you have to go through the the suck of understanding what it means to have and to work with the clients that you don't necessarily want to work with or the corporate projects that, you know, really aren't the most creative um, in a way for you, to, <laughs> for you to then not, not only embrace that part of the process, but also to understand that, hey, now I have money coming in where I'm not stressing about I'm not stressing over the money aspect of the business and I'm able to allow the business to grow by, you know, being able to hire other people that can do things that we can't do that then allow us to scale up in value and scale up, you know, what we're able to do for people, which then allows us to charge more, you know, what have you. So he's a big one on starting from point A, going through the suck, then allowing that creative and that passion to really flourish long term. Um, and I think I've, I've, I've understood that for a while, but I think I ran away from that for, uh, sometime and I allowed that ego to be like, no, there's no way. Like, I know I can do it. I know I can get it now. I like year one into the business year, you know, going on year two. Like, I know I can do that. You, yeah, you can. It's just, you're going to deal with a much different roller coaster than you would if um, in the game of entrepreneurship, you know, rather than just being able to go through, learn from the wisdom of other people that have had that same ego mindset, you know, gone through the same exact trials and tribulations that, you can avoid if you just allow yourself to be humble and to continue or to humble yourself enough to be able to receive the wisdom and to apply it into uh, your life. So I think that's where I'm at right now. I like it. Okay. So Desmond, and this is only, only because you and I have worked together for long enough that um, I feel so inclined to ask you this question. Where's the gap? What's different between you and him? I think the difference might be uh like stages of like yes i've i've like found this like dream client that helped me like get really crystal clear on who i want to serve um and i'm also like testing my offer like my deliverables with that client mm -hmm. with that particular dream client so I think that's probably the the difference, just difference in stages. Stages and um, forced repetition. So this is a fun, 
little like I don't know it's a fun little space to play in people understand this forced repetition causes um your human condition to stand out in your business so Desmond this isn't your first business this also isn't your first set of offers that you tested this isn't your first set of you had dream clients in a different part of the sales space a couple of years before I met you yeah you had dream you, you had you you've seen the unicorn in a couple of different sec what we call sectors or niches in your industry or in your niche a couple of different sectors in there this is josh's first little sector so he's he doesn't have crispy edges yet so the reason why i've come across four unicorn clients is because i have launched managed and run businesses in six different industries across probably four major sectors out of the eight four of the major sectors in the world so i've stretched myself out quite a few different directions like i worked in art and media i owned a branding firm for nine years i did small business branding brand development and um like small business brand recognition. So boutique style businesses forever. I was a graphic designer and a web developer. And then I was a programmer and a developer. And then I got into the tech space. And then I got into the software and functionality space. And then I got into problem solving. And right about the time I was down near burnout, the light bulb turned on because I found the thing that I was best at doing when I was asleep. I could do it no matter what was going on. It wasn't the thing I was passionate about, so don't get it twisted. Definitely not my passion, but it's something I am the most proficient in, and that is problem solving. And it's problem solving using what we call like first world problems, like real world technology, real world application, real world like execution. But I found my first three out of the four unicorn clients. My first three came in the creative space, which is what Josh is talking about. So your unicorn client will change. That's why it's not a repeatable subject. That's why trying to, what we call duplicate yourself or trying to build another you so that you can take things off your plate is not a viable answer. It's not a business model. It's not a stress reliever. It's not possible. You can maybe... If you are super proficient at teaching, you can teach somebody to be somewhere between 68 and 71% of you. And that is not enough to hold up a brand or at all reputation. It, it will kill it. But those unicorn clients, they are kind of like the lifeblood behind embracing the suck. And he's not wrong. You do have to embrace the suck. It happens. But the Megans of the world doesn't are what fuels the, I'm going to put out not my favorite version of marketing, sell a course and let everybody just buy it. I had a client the other day, but this just feels cheesy. I'm like, at what point has marketing not felt cheesy to you? Like, get real. Like you have lost your marbles. If you think that this is going to go any differently than it's going right now, this is marketing. Get used to it. Man, you hit the nail. You, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. Like I have a, I have a. There's a client. I mean, we all have clients or you know people like they were like, man, I just don't want to renew this contract. I don't <laughs> like. I want to fire this person, but if it's protecting the bag so that I can then keep playing the game, then it's almost like, man, I got to just collect the bag, provide value, and just like suck it up and, and deal with it, right? Like I can't have everything my way. And uh, that was a huge paradigm shift I had a couple a couple of weeks ago. And um, um, yeah, man. So so so, and I know Josh, you probably have some similar stories where uh, where you wanted to fire clients, but you uh, you just collect the back, man. Right? Eat the eat the shit, right? So I'm there right now, bro. Like while she's talking, I'm like, dang, man. I know because you know, like you know, the one client I have right now. Um, or the consistent one, you know, I was planning on, 
oh, they're not my ideal client. You know, I don't really find fulfillment. Matter of fact, I don't really like working with this team. You know, like that's just whatever. It is what it is. Now I'm like, ah. uh, as part of securing the bag, bro, you got to embrace that suck, you know, and just even if it's not as, I think the thing with him is just it's not as consistent as I would like. Plus it's more so doing like technician work rather than actually doing what I believe my um, zone of geniuses. Um, like one thing I wrote down, Heather, while you were, while you were talking is you uh, made a statement that, you know, or a question, like, what am I, what am I best at doing even when I'm asleep? Um, that's powerful. And I, I know for me, it's, it's in the, it's in the creative space, but it's not necessarily in the technician as, aspect of things. Um, having to be like the best camera guy or the best, you know, editor or gaffer and all that. It's, it's none of that. Um, that's actually not even what my, what my background is. Um, and so realizing that in, in some ways I find myself in that space, it's what causes me to feel like, oh man, you know, I don't really enjoy what I'm doing, you know, right now, especially now with this client. And so I make it, maybe I make the excuse about the client, but it just means that I'm not happy with where I'm at in, in the stage of my business. 50% yes, 50% no. Some of it has to do with happiness. Sometimes it's happiness or where you're at in your business. But about half the time, it has nothing to do with the client or you. It just is what it is. Because when you look at a, a market, no matter how, no matter how narrow you niche out, there is always going to be what we call the feeder and the flourisher. So the things that we love doing, like the, oh my God, I cannot wait to get started working on this. I will work on it on the weekends. I, I want to talk to you about like the new and upcoming next thing. Like yesterday, like you will come across those clients that feed the beast. And they are the ones that I, Desmond and I were unpacking his, his unicorn. And I was like, listen, I was like, there's, there's this catch because unicorn clients are only unicorn clients when two separate sectors of the road meet. And it's where their human condition is exactly what you're looking for right now. And their gaps are the things that you are so proficient in solving. And they are so, while they're also so blind to them, that no, and no one's ever told them you have to change this. You need to adjust this. You need to work on this. It's, it's a three part mess is what it is. It's a mess. And it's a mess that more often than not doesn't come along. Like you'll get the gaps and the willingness to like execute like the the good client piece, but the human condition won't match. I'll be like, God, you drive me insane. Like it doesn't matter how good of a fit you are on the business side, you are a personal irritation. So it's a buy-in. It's it really ha comes down to like all those parts have to be in the same place. But the feeder. The feeder client is the avatars we build. Like we're going to talk about marketing. I'll make this really easy for everybody to understand and see. When we build you out an avatar and say, this is the person you target blind for cold traffic, those are your feeder clients. They will not feed your soul. They will not inspire or incite like new genius. They will, however, need your product, understand what it is that you're offering, and buy what you're selling. That's embracing the suck. You embrace the feeder client because the feeder client will not feed what keeps you running a business. Trust me, I have over the course of my career, but I have, I was about, I was about eight months into being an entrepreneur and I took three years off. Now I got lucky and I made a fuck ton of money like the first six months. And I mean a fuck ton. And then I took three years off because I wasn't sure that what I was doing was ever going to make me happy. And I built another company and then inevitably went back to the first company and was happy as a clam. But I've taken extended periods of time off where I just don't work. And I don't work because I don't have any desire to embrace the suck. When you get to that point, you either shift or you get out. Out. 
it is no, there's no in between. There's no happy medium. There's no like, well, maybe for a little bit and this will change. It won't. If you do not have the desire to embrace the suck and feed the masses, then you simply get out or shift to a different business model completely. I mean, this is where unicorns come in. The unicorns come in because they are the sprinkles on the cupcakes or the sparkles on the snowflakes. They're the the glitter and the glitz. They're the they're the people that you let book calls outside of business hours and on fucking Saturdays. And they're people that you do some new crazy editing and technology thing. Like, you know, we tried this and I loved it and we executed it. I know you didn't ask for it. I know you were gonna love it, so I just did it anyway. Like they're the people that you just jive with. So it makes most of it worth it. Yeah, that that landed for sure. (laughs) Um, So, you know, while we're kind of on this subject, like I'm pretty curious to like hear um, a little bit about you guys' take on some powerful like uh, uh, access, not not in terms of like the person, but like the 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 time of your life, right? Like because you know we were you know and obviously we're attracting unicorns. We want to attract unicorns, and obviously being on the on the supply side of receiving the unicorn is, is great. But I want to kind of go on the other end of of it in terms of like when we were unicorns to someone else in terms of we were in the right place at the right time to, um, you know, receive the right information or get the right services or, or write the right connections in order to propel ourselves. So I'm pretty curious to kind of hear, you know, your unicorn moment where you felt like you were a unicorn and, um, you know, it, it like sent you to the moon, essentially a new level in life personally and professionally, even monetarily could be any kind of unicorn in, in general. Doesn't tell me your story first. This is gonna be a you first kind of day. This is a you okay, whatever. That's cool. Um, so I would say that I, I definitely had about three moments in life, and I'll I'll talk about one since it's probably the most relevant one. Um, not to get cheesy, guys. I swear this isn't cheesy, but it was probably when I met Heather, right? Um, pretty surprisingly. I met her, I heard her talk on a conference call on a, on a, we were on the same project and I was like, who the heck is this chick? And um, I was living in in Ocean Beach at the time in San Diego. And, um, and uh, I was like, man, I gotta like hit this, I gotta hit this lady up. Like, 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 what what, what do you know? Like, I need to know, I need to, I need to know what you know. So I reached out to Heather Mm -hmm. and uh, I sent her a text message and I think I voiced note too. I was at the beach. I never forget this. I was like, man, like t- I never asked anyone this in my life. Usually, like I've asked questions, but I never asked this. Teach me. He teach me everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> teach me. Like, yo, like, can I learn from you? Right? Can I like? Can I? Can I? Can I learn from you? And she ignored me for about like a couple months, and then I texted her back again, <laughs> like, hey, you get my message, and. uh, she jumped, she told me to jump on a car and then boom. Now we're like, man, she's like my mentor. She's now turned into my best friend and now my business partner. Hopefully we're going to get that finalized by the end of the year. But I went pretty far in terms of like the mental modeling is probably by far the, the most value I got out of our relationship was like, just like processing information totally more holistically and asking myself questions before I rush to judgment. Right. So kind of like fighting my own biases by also like trying to uncover the right information in order to right, make the right decisions. So that's by far the most value. Like everything else has been kind of cupcakes on top, but that by far has helped me tremendously professionally and both personally. So that's that's that was my unicorn moment. Thank you, darling. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I didn't mean to get bubbly, but yeah, okay, we can let that sit in for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so all right you want a unicorn when i was the unic oh well so i have had a a really good friend and mentor 
for, well, let's see how long have I known Randy? Probably five, six years now. And I'm sure that I was a unicorn to somebody when I was much, much younger in business, but I had hit kind of a capped point in my business and I had zero desire to grow it. Um, yet it ha- it had a growth trajectory that was re- required. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I want to burn this down. And I said that, like word vomited it during a kickoff call. Randy was a new client. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I want to, I, I, just, I think I just want to burn my business down. And he was like, that's not helping right now. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm aware. I'm like, trust me, I'm still the best. Best, I'm the only person that does this and it doesn't mean I like it. And he, it was, it was the moment where he said, if you're the only person that does it and you know that you do it so proficiently, you know, that finding clients is not hard. What is it that keeps you doing it? And I was like, it's bread and butter. And he was like, okay, so why burn it down? I was like, replication it's not possible i was like it's bread and butter but it's me it's bread and butter with me in the mix he was like okay he's like automate it i was like been there tried that didn't work he's like change it and i went what i was like you came to me asking me to get you do realize you just bought something and you told me to change he was like yeah change it i was like to what and he goes a different version of where you're standing right now. And he actually, like, I knew that he was the person that I needed to follow when he chose to use an analogy that concerns the multiverse. So it's like, you're my person. This is going to work. We need to get Randy on the podcast. I'll have a lot of fun with this. But yeah, it was when somebody understood my come from for the first time. Because it was, it's never, it's never about the money. The money's great. It's never about the money. It's always about the milestones. When you stop putting milestones in front of you, stop doing it for the money. Because if there is no, if there's nothing you're trying to grab at, you're trying to reach for, you're trying to successfully actually accomplish that you have not done before. There's no more milestones, no more business. Mm. yeah secure the bag but don't chase the bag precisely yeah got it got it what about you jay money what you got big dog honestly i'm I'm just soaking all that in that's man Mm. I think that, that, that kind of leaves me. Um, Heather, let me ask you when, when um, I think you said his name was Randy, uh, pardon me. Um, when he told you to, when he was giving you different options on different ways that you could shift, how did you know which one was the right one for you? Well, see, here's the funny thing. Like Randy um kind of started coaching me for no good goddamn reason um mostly because i happen to have a a lapse of judgment on a new client call and he was like yeah i think we need to be friends and uh you lost your mind and i was like yep yep we're there but when it comes to it's not there isn't a right one so let me like reset your mental playing field. You're looking for which one, which what shift is my right shift to take? If you can see the shift as a possibility, if you can see what I call functionality in it, then that means it's a viable option. You what you do is you disqualify a shift if if it doesn't if it's the functionality's not there. If it's not viable, it doesn't count. You take it out of the mix. You put a hundred different possible shifts in the same conversation. 
for certain people, some of them simply aren't viable. For other people, they are. So once you have a list of viable solutions, that's when you get to either say like, yay or nay, and all the solutions will work. Like functionality, logistics always comes first. Like I will tell you, I'll say it now and probably a hundred million more times. Good business is nothing more than good math. It has nothing to do with experiences, nothing to do with, it has nothing to do with human. Good business is predicated on good math. And that is it. When you get on the other side of the good math, that's when you get good human. And if you can take good math and good human and good, like for you, you, this is what you've not, have you not ever taught him the trifecta? Talking about a son of genius, like you're. No, no. Mm -mm. So in order for something to, the, the level of the measuring markers that are required for me to even choose to get interested in getting involved in something is that they have to meet what we call a basic trifecta. It has to be a win for you, a win for me, and a win for the world. So it has to be like, it has to meet good, good money, good sense, and good feelings. So if it can't fill, like if it, if it doesn't fulfill all three of those criteria on the flat basis, it's automatically disqualified. It's off of my radar. I, I go through my email box. Technically, I'm supposed to go through it once a week. I go through it about once a month um, and literally send out the same I'm not interested email, copy and paste about a, at least a thousand times a month. Not interested in getting involved in this because it doesn't meet like a basic sniff test. It has to be functional. It has to be make sense has to be not an idiot move and i have to have a it has to make me feel good i gotta i have to get giddy about it and then i'm like okay sounds like fun like now i'm curious then then you're at the very beginning steps of negotiating or getting into or digging through like viability is there but do i want it this way do i want this shift before that shift and if you take one of them and implement it, that does not mean you can't be like six months later, now I'm going to go shift that one too. Now I'm going to go push that button because you narrow down the field based on viability alone. Outside of that, then they're all, they're all yours. They're all also the right choice. If you want to get like down and dirty in the right and wrong, they're all the right choice. They're all also the wrong choice. That's a gut check moment. That's a where do you be when you make that decision? Because I can absolutely tell you that I have <clears throat> looked at an ABC scenario, pick one of these three, and made a decision on a Friday and on a Monday felt the need to make a completely separate decision and done a 180 because I felt like it. Fair enough. Yeah, that's clear to me. I appreciate that. Thank you for the feedback. Oh. So tell me, Josh, you tell me a story of one of your first big investments, either in your business, in yourself, big investments where you bought in and were like, this is the fucking ball. And you like literally like wanted to come off a hanger because more often than not, that is the moment where you are the unicorn for them. Hmm. I feel like for the most part, um, I mean, speaking honestly, for the most part, I think I've always had a sense of, uh, I mean, understanding like consumer behavior. I get we always have like, or not always, but especially with larger purchases, we can walk, fall into buyer's remorse. 
I think I've had some level of buyer's remorse, or at least like that apprehension when it comes to even making big investments um, into myself or into my business. I'd say the mm, and let me ask you this. Um, with answering that question, is it as if there's an absence of like buyer's remorse or potential fear, or is that, is that in spite of that, you still felt like, Oh my God, this is the you know, best thing in the world. It has nothing to do with buyer's remorse. You need to get out of your head. Hmm. It has everything to do with like more. I, and I mean, honestly, like I, the moments that I've had in my career where this has been a thing for me, it's usually not something that's pitched to me either. It's usually something I come across or stumble across, like some of the best software I've ever purchased, some of the best corporate partnerships that Dibby, elegant theme. I stumbled across them. Oh my God. I still rant and rave about them and it's been over a decade. But when I bought into something or what I've invested into something, be it buying a thing, buying a service, hiring a human, and I'm like, do 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 where it keeps it feels like you made the decision and then yet you get more excited when that level up keeps happening and you're like i can't there's no way that this can get any better it's fucking better. damn it how did that happen like that excitement that's what i'm talking about this has nothing to do with like how buyers buy gotcha i don't know if i've had that yet I've, I've made a lot of investments, um, whether even from back playing sports, I made a lot of investments, a lot of things that like I was extremely happy about in the sense of like, like, man, like this is the real deal. Um, but none that have had me at that level yet. Really? At least when I think about it, I don't, nothing comes to mind. Doesn't you got some work cut out for you. Yeah, man, you get to, uh, we got, we got to, we got to go deep on that, man. You got to, um, that, that sounds, I don't want to be a, a doctor here diagnosing anything, but in mm -hmm. terms of, um, is it okay if I give like my perspective, sort of if I have permission on the pod? Yeah, always, bro. Yeah, I would say like, I'm sensing a lack of presence um, when you make the, when you make purchases like consciously like drop in and be like, Oh, like feel like if you can't feel what's on the other end of a purchase, then like that's showing that you, you're not like under like living in that direct moment of that transaction. Like, cause money's just an energy exchange. And then at the day, like I'm paying for, I'm giving paying money to receive value for a desired outcome. Right. I'm paying for this ice cream, this caramel ice cream, because I want to taste this caramel ice cream and I want to feel happy and, and whole at the end. Right. I want to feel satisfied. Right. Um, so yeah, man, I, I think that you get to really like, now that you're consciously aware of it, I'm, I'm pretty sure that now that you cannot unknow now what you know, and um, hopefully you celebrate your next, your next purchase, man. Yeah, you're right. Sure. I, I, I don't do that. I, I actually, dang. Um, but not even in crypto. Like, have you had this moment? Like, have you not like bought a coin or a stock or even like, right. have you ever made? Huh? Right. Yeah. Like you ever bought anything? Yeah. I mean, when, I, like, when oh. Bitcoin came out, oh, I exploded. I bought it. And then I was like, I'm the smartest person in the world. I'm the smartest person <laughs> in the world. And then it tanked the first time. And I still felt like I was the smartest person in the world. Mm. And look at it now. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people feel this way when they buy um clothes shoes video game like physical products like that same feeling that like this buggy mom um i get this very feeling and it grows exponentially moment after moment for what i see is like the longevity of forever every time i buy a pair of um cable knit or like cardigan uggs I fucking love those boots. I literally can live in those kind of images. They are my favorite shoes. I have five pairs. I have sought them out very particularly, color, style, everything. And 
every time I put them on, I'm like, now imagine feeling that way about purchasing something in your business. I feel this way every day, Heather. Like even like my team, I'm like, oh, I'm so grateful for Kit. Like so grateful for her. Like I'm just like, I love it, right? Even like I, I stick some a, a crypto today for the first time, like Solana and some and some Harmony One, and I was excited about it. I didn't even get anything yet. I'm just like, huh? I'm excited for this six percent, <laughs> this six percent return on my token, right? Like I was, I was like stoked. So I think like it's a choice more than it is like external. I think that's kind of where we're coming down to. Like it's it's making a choice, um, and honestly taking ownership. Right. And like how you make ex- choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's more of a choice than anything. Don't you agree, Heather? Oh, I, I absolutely do. Yeah. Let so me uh, push back a little bit and ask so you guys, far. like, because I mean, Desmond, you know me very well. Um very much I'm I'm very analytical. And so I think that's one of the things that stops me from making any type of purchase, even the stuff that I'm like excited about, like crypto. Like when we're talking about crypto and NFTs and all that, I'm like, you're like, yeah, I made the investment. Yeah, like I'm I'm telling like, yo, like you gotta get in on this and this type of stuff. And I'm you know <laughs> giving all this detail. But with that, it's still it's still like all I remember is like ever since I was a kid, I've always had that mindset where my mindset is always like forward focused. Like Future, like part of my issue now, and it's funny because um, this is one of the, the the feedback that you know my girl can give me, give me often, or cl- close friends are like, "Hey, man, you need to start being more present. Like you're you're so future based that you don't realize that like you're mistaking, like you're you're negating the 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 life that's right in front of you right now because you're so worried about and focused on what's coming, you know, down the road. And I've done that with football. I've done that growing up. I think it's because I've always had lived in like a household like an old school dad where you know things are more so of like what's next what's next what's next so even in football i'd make a play i'd make like i'd i'd, I'd have all these crazy stats or you know win these like these these awards or all all state all american whatever and i'm still like yeah okay what's next like i'm not yeah yeah i'm not hearing all that what's next like i gotta get to the next thing. i gotta figure out the next thing you know i can celebrate that later on in life you know when i build the empire but until then like nah man i gotta i gotta i gotta stay focused on the next thing the next thing the next thing so i got feedback for you yes yeah i got a lot of feedback for you but first and foremost (laughs) it's not it's less about being present Mm -hmm. i think that there's a i think there's a we're going to call this um, a misuse of language. It has nothing to do with being present. It has everything to do with enjoying the present. Trust me, every second of every day through three divorces. Yeah, you heard me. Three of them. I got three of those motherfuckers under my belt. and Two of them were exceptionally expensive. They damn near killed me. And when it was all said and done, the what's next thing? Yes, it's totally the reason. My business is the reason I got divorced two out of three times. And I did it happily. I was like, great, you got warned. Fuck off. I told you, you could not have the cookie and now you want the cookie and, and I'm still telling you, you don't get the cookie. And yet, celebrating the win, it's about enjoying the present the enjoyment of that, the interaction with it, the dropping into it doesn't negate the what's next. Like, that's great. What's next? And let's have a party. And by the way, Desmond, somebody gets to go. It's been a long time since I've said that. Somebody gets to go. Josh, Josh, Josh already went. (laughs) <laughs> talking, about, talking about LA? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where I actually met Desmond. I met Desmond. <laughs> you know, and you know what's funny? That's actually the thing that Zach was getting on me about all the time, Des. It was like, yo, you need to be more present, man. You need to calm, you need to slow things down. And actually, like, in, like the man, you check-in. You should go to Miami more. I can't go with your girl, man. You should need to go to Miami more, man. Maybe that's it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my trigger for saying that you get to go had nothing to do with the slowdown or the speed up or any of that. It was actually when you were like, 
So I'm an analyzer, which means like this, it, it was A means B is not possible. Mm. Mm. Um, you t- I'm, I'm going to figure out what this looks like and you two are going to pick the days, but we are going to do a, a straighten your shit out and get started on the right foot retreat. You guys are coming here. Or you guys should just come to Columbia because I'm not coming at seven foot in the United States for all of 2022. I don't think you heard me, Desmond. Did you hear me telling you, you said, what was you happening? Said come out, you said come out. You, to I said you, you are. guys are coming here. There wasn't a question or a request in that. That was simply a statement. Man, I don't think Uncle Sam can see me, but <laughs> I think I, I'm gonna cover. I'll cover travel accommodations for you guys to come meet me. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, I think today was great, guys. I think I think we 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 got a lot talked about today. Um, and if you're in the audience right now, we wanna we wanna give you a big shout out. Welcome to the end. And uh, if you found this super helpful, feel free to share this with your network, like, subscribe, send us a review. If you want to come on the show, just go on to the website, campfirecapitalism.com, and let us know. We'll love to, to, to host you on the panel with us. Um, it was great. I think we're out. Bye. Thanks.